Happy New Year. I'm your host, Heather Dawson, and welcome to the first episode of 2018 for Healthy RC Living. Well, we had a lot to commemorate as 2017 came to an end. Reporter David Wiley captured our story for the end of the year celebration. Healthy RC was launched in 2008 and has become an integral part of day-to-day -day life here in Rancho Cucamonga. Healthy RC is a truly unique partnership between the city and the community that brings all sectors together, including business owners, nonprofit organizations, school districts, city staff, elected officials, and residents to make Rancho Cucamonga the healthiest it can be. Since its inception nearly 10 years ago, Healthy RC has received many awards and national recognitions for our work to improve community health. Healthy RC has been able to achieve these goals by taking a comprehensive approach. That approach focuses on eight community health priorities. Together, these priorities help create a stronger, safer, and healthier Rancho Cucamonga. Join us! in capturing our story. Healthy RC was honored with a number of national and local awards over this past year. Among them, the prestigious Harvard Kennedy School Innovation Award and the Bright Ideas Award from Harvard University's Ash Center for Democratic Governance and Innovation. Healthy RC was recognized as a bright idea for its comprehensive, community-driven approach to improving community health and encouraging healthy, sustainable lifestyles. Rancho Cucamonga was also one of six cities selected by the National League of Cities to participate in the Mayor's Institute on Advancing Education and Health through a community school strategy. Mayor Michael and representatives from the Cucamonga School District attended the event in May in Philadelphia to share practices and lessons on how Healthy RC is ensuring our local children are healthy and ready to learn. Rancho Cucamonga also had a presence at the ninth Annual Biennial Childhood Obesity Conference in San Diego. Management analysts Mike Palmer and Teresa Gonzalez, a member of our Healthy RC Community Champions Group, spoke at one of the sessions, focusing on community-driven change. Nearly 2,000 people from across the nation attended the conference, giving Rancho Cucamonga and Healthy RC another high-profile forum to share its successes. 2017 brought the launch of the Healthy RC Compassionate Community Initiative, an effort to create a unified community through kindness and goodwill to others. This movement of compassion directly encompasses Healthy RC's vision, mission, and values to create the healthiest community possible in Rancho Cucamonga. And as part of the kickoff, our Healthy RC youth leaders and community champions took part in a campaign of random acts of kindness in our community by giving flowers to unsuspecting residents. The reaction was overwhelming. In addition, students at Vineyard Junior High School took part in the Great Kindness Challenge. Open Streets RC was a community event that reimagined our streets and looked at the ways that we can make them safer, more beautiful, and more accessible to everyone of every ability. The City of Rancho Cucamonga and Healthy RC partnered with SCAG, SBCTA, and the Go Human campaign to host Open Streets RC on a beautiful Saturday in May. More than 5,000 residents turned out for the event that saw a portion of Town Center Drive and Elm Avenue closed to cars. Streets were transformed into safer, more enjoyable places to walk, bike, and play. The event also featured a number of demonstration projects, including temporary buffered bike lanes, a pop-up cycle track, safer intersections, bike corrals and parklets. The Ron Ives Bicycle Rodeo was also on hand and was a huge hit with kids and their families. 
residents had the opportunity to explore new, innovative projects to make walking and bicycling safer and more enjoyable and provide valuable feedback to the city on their experiences. Community input is critical as it helps guide future projects to make the city of Rancho Cucamonga one of the safest cities in the nation. The Healthy RC Youth Leaders Program welcomed in 15 new students this year. The new students underwent a selective process and represent diverse and dedicated students from Rancho Cucamonga high schools and middle schools. The Healthy RC Youth Leaders worked on some exciting projects this year. Those projects included developing a mental health awareness video for the Directing Change Competition, an educational e-cigarette campaign, and participating in the Healthy RC Compassionate Community Initiative. The youth leaders also worked on improving their public speaking skills. The youth leaders gave speeches on two occasions to the Health Happy Toastmasters Club, where they were evaluated by seasoned Toastmasters. The speeches touched on topics that included the eight Healthy RC health priorities. And Sarah Delaney Degner, a freshman at Alta Loma High School, even received a Best Speech Award for her talk on dealing with anxiety. Among the most passionate Healthy RC youth leaders is Maylin Aquino, who received the Student Community All-Star Award from the Dairy Council of California. May Lynn is one of the founding members of the Healthy RC Youth Leaders. She's been serving our community for seven years, helping develop things like the city's nutrition and beverage policy. In fact, May Lynn has been instrumental in creating the city's first mental health campaign in an effort to reduce the stigma of mental health issues and to provide resources to residents who need assistance. The evaluation report really builds on the foundation for community health improvement that was laid out by the Healthy RC Strategic Plan adopted in 2014 by the City Council. The Healthy RC Strategic Plan is a living, working document that guides the actions of the initiative. With the recent release of this evaluation report, there were some incredibly positive statistics showing the success of Healthy RC. Healthy RC and our community partners continue to develop a comprehensive mental health awareness campaign. The campaign is designed to dispel the stigma that is sometimes associated with mental health issues and to encourage people to access appropriate services. Healthy RC started a community-wide conversation by hosting three mental health symposiums throughout the year to connect mental health resources to residents. Healthy RC continues to be a wide-ranging program that touches every aspect of our lives here in Rancho Cucamonga. This unique partnership between the city and our community is paying dividends, with much more to come in the future. Thank you for helping in capturing our story. We encourage you to be part of the story of Healthy RC as we move into a healthier and more sustainable 2018. Well, it's the new year and a great time to get in shape. Maddie Perry introduces us to Orange Theory Fitness. We've got some good news. Orange Theory Fitness is taking health and training to a whole new level. And the better news, they're located right here in Rancho Cucamonga. Let's go check them out. Orange Theory Fitness came to Rancho Cucamonga because of the city's progressive, expansive nature. Along with the residents of our city, this new studio believes in the importance of fitness and elevating the quality of life. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-hour full-body workout. We do half endurance, half strength and power. Halfway through, we flip to ensure variety as well as challenge. We work in five heart rate zones, and everyone wears a heart rate monitor when they work out. And in real time, up on big TV screens in the studio, you see your results in real time. So how many calories you're burning, what heart rate zone you're in. And then uh, each workout is led by a professional coach so that you don't overtrain or undertrain. So it's high intensity interval training. 
That being said, it is for all fitness levels. So we have some folks that walk in, whether it's, you know, they haven't worked out in their life or it's been years or months. You know, everybody comes in and they, I haven't worked out in a while. And I say, define a while. Is it seven years? Is it two weeks? I mean, because everybody, it's a little different. Um, but it's all fitness levels. So they may have an injury. They may have not worked out in a really long time. So we have power walkers, joggers, and runners on the treadmills and just different fitness levels in the workout room. We're all doing the same exercise, but everybody's at a different level. So the coaches are there to be able to offer options or challenges. And again, it's high intensity interval training, but we cater to everybody. We want everyone to have a, a workout that actually gets results. One aspect that makes this type of training so unique is that every day is focused on challenging different parts of your body to ensure both variety and improvement. Each day, it's a full body workout. So like I said, it's a one hour full body workout, but each day has a different focus. For instance, today is a strength day. So uh, yesterday was endurance. We do endurance, strength, and power. And then the fourth day is ESP, which is a mix of all three, endurance, strength, and power. And every single workout is different though. So some people will ask, okay, so say I come on a power day, you know, this Wednesday, is it gonna be the same workout some power day next week? And I said, no, it'll have that same focus, but never the same workout. We don't want your body to get used to the workout. So our workouts are designed by our fitness advisory board with corporate. Um, they're tested for efficiency, effectiveness, and um, then they're distributed to all the studios around the world. And so you can message your sister, and I have one member, she's a member here, and her sister lives in Florida, and they talk about the workout and how many splat points they got and how many calories they burned, and so they can talk about it and, and share that, even though they're living across the country from each other. I mean, I feel like I'm getting most out of, the most out of an hour's workout. It's a, it's a high intensity interval training, so a lot of cardio, weights, you know, we're always moving. So I, I feel like I'm, I'm getting a lot for the hour that I put into it. Whether you prefer power walking or power lifting, the coaches at Orange Theory Fitness are there to personalize your workout and give you the assistance that you need to achieve your goals. You don't have to have any background in fitness to come and work out with us. I mean, that's why we have the coaches. You can walk in not know, I have one lady, she joined, she didn't even know what a push up was. Literally, and so I had to literally like, grab her hips and show her this is how you do a push-up and now I mean she's amazing her body composition has changed she's so much stronger she jogs on the treadmill I mean she's amazing and and to watch our, our members get better like that is really fun for us too as coaches uh, I feel like I've lost weight I've become a lot more toned I feel better I work out five or six days a week I always feel like I have a lot of energy and uh, it's it's great I feel a lot better Orange Theory Fitness, much like the color orange itself, has a bright, positive atmosphere to energize members and help them get the most out of their workout. Also, the classes themselves only accommodate up to 24 members at a time, giving the space a more communal feel. You know, the, the coaches know everybody's name, the staff knows everybody's name. We know if they're having kids or, I mean, like I said, we have had people announce their pregnancies and we've had couples you know, become friends and they go to dinner with each other and go to events and, and, and the studio itself puts on events every month so that we don't only see each other here. We like try to go out in the community and have fun and do stuff together. Yeah, you start to see the same faces, if you, especially if you come to the same class. I sometimes do a morning, sometimes afternoon, but I start to recognize people and learn, you learn people's names and, you know, or Morgan will call somebody out once in a while. And so, and then you start to compete with people and you say, that guy's pretty good on the road, or I'm going to try to keep up with him and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's pretty fun. It's motivating and you, you do start to meet people and, and learn who to like keep up with and so forth. It's fun. Even though the studio is focused on fitness, the company's website has downloadable meal plans to help members fuel their bodies with the nutrition they need for phenomenal results. They also have different membership options that are suitable for any lifestyle. Uh, the membership options vary depending on uh, folks' budget as well as how many times a week they actually want to come. Because you, you have some folks that have a lot of memberships, you know, they might be into spin and they do, you know, some yoga and this is going to be a supplement. So we have a membership that fits for them. And then we have people where this is their workout and they want to come as many times a week as they want. I have some people that come two or three times a day die hard but yes it's mm -hmm. true um, so sometimes people are training for things and so they want to catch more than one workout in a day so we have memberships that cater to 
how many times a week they want to come. We have three different options. And then folks that travel a lot or, you know, they don't want a month-to-month -month membership, they just do a package, and we have three different package options for them. Orange Theory Fitness is conveniently located off of Day Creek and the 210 Freeway, right in the Ralph Shopping Center. For more information, visit their website at www.orangetheoryfitness.com. Thanks for watching this episode of RC Spotlight. I'm Madison Perry, and we'll see you next time. For military families, there's nothing more devastating than losing a loved one in battle overseas. For a local family, they have taken an extra step, a special adoption, to honor their son and ease the pain of his loss. U.S. Marine Sergeant Joshua Ashley is an American hero who lost his life in 2012 while fighting for our country in Afghanistan. Joshua was a local boy who grew up in Rancho Cucamonga. He had a towering presence and a magnetic personality that left an indelible mark on those who knew him. He was very athletic, very competitive, but um, and he was big in stature, he's like 6'3", but he was the biggest teddy bear. A popular student at Etiwanda High School, Joshua was moved by the events of 9-11 and felt a calling to join the military. He didn't want to go to college, he wanted to go to the Marine Corps. So I made him give me one year in college, and he did, and after that first year, he went right into the Marine Corps. And Joshua took to the Marines right away, becoming a military policeman and eventually entering the canine handler program. That's where he first met Sirius. After training at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina, Joshua and Sirius were deployed to the front lines in Afghanistan. He was always excited about the missions over there. That's what he was trained for. And despite their perilous assignment, Josh managed to talk with his mother often via Skype. In fact, they spoke the night before he was killed and talked about Sirius. When we Skyped, he said, um, Mom, I re-enlisted. I know you're not going to like it. He goes, and where I'm going, I'm not going to be able to take Sirius with me. And he said, um, I'm going to adopt him, but you're going to have to take him for me. And then when I get to wherever I'm going, I'm, I'll take him. 24 hours after that phone call, Tammy and her family were notified that Josh had been killed by a landmine. Remarkably, Sirius survived. And as devastating as it was to deal with the death of her son, Tammy almost immediately began pursuing the adoption of Sirius. I started the process of the adoption, which is, it's rare. Um, parents don't usually get their children's, you know, dogs that they are assigned. Uh, however, um, they had just recently started uh, allowing parents of the fallen to adopt their child's dog. Sirius continued to serve with the Marines during the adoption process, and during that time, Sirius had a non-combat related accident that left him near death. Despite injuries that left Sirius unable to open his mouth, Tammy went through with the adoption. He's special needs in a way because he can't eat, open his mouth normal, he has to lap everything up, but he's healthy and seems very much loving retirement. And while caring for Sirius has been a challenge, he's been a constant reminder for Tammy and her family of the son that they lost. Josh never had kids and he wasn't married. And to me, this is his son. So I, that's the only part I have of him. And Tammy and Sirius continue to keep Josh's memory alive. Josh and Sirius were memorialized on the Lucy Pet Foundation float at the 2018 Rose Parade. Tammy and Sirius rode on that float, taking Josh's story to the world. He loved that dog, and for the Marines to give that dog to Tammy, and, and the dog's been living out the rest of his life, it's just great. And so what an honor it is for me to be able to have a float that's paused for life 
and to have Sirius and Tammy on the float. I mean, it breaks me up thinking about it. For me, this is all about having my son never be forgotten. And with the help of Tammy and Sirius, the ultimate sacrifice that Sergeant Joshua Ashley made for our freedom will never be forgotten. I'm David Wiley for Healthy RC Living. A new shopping and dining experience is coming to a familiar location in Rancho Cucamonga. The Haven City Market is an 85,000 square foot restaurant complex and gourmet market planned for a building at Haven Avenue and Arrow Route that was previously occupied by a JCPenney furniture outlet. Uh, Haven City Market is going to be a gourmet food hall um, housing about 25 to 28 restaurant concepts as well as a marketplace. Um, also within the project is going to be a 20,000 square foot outdoor park and garden area. The concept for the Haven City Market calls for a diverse dining experience and a dynamic social atmosphere with multiple restaurants in a cool casual setting. This concept is similar to gourmet food halls found in other cities in Southern California, including the Anaheim Packing House, which has been described as a culinary walkabout. Rancho Cucamonga doesn't have, and the Inland Empire in general, doesn't have a gourmet food hall, a destination, and not just another collection of restaurants, but a, literally a destination where you can come bring your friends, you can go on date night, you can bring your whole family, and you can do all of that at one place. The Haven City Market promises to bring locals and visitors a very unique experience. And while the lineup of restaurants hasn't been announced yet, it does aim to be an eclectic mix of dining options. So anything from sushi to a speakeasy um, to a gastropub to poke to, you know, flavors of the Middle East to a rice pudding bar, it's going to be a really amazing eclectic mix of all types of concepts that you don't really normally see in your standard, you know, um, plazas or strip malls. The future site of the Haven City Market has been empty since 2014, but this new development is an example of the city of Rancho Cucamonga's innovation in repurposing older buildings. Putting this type of, of use with a large amount of food options in an area that's not being utilized right now. I think that's going to provide a lot of options for the businesses in the area, um, for the residences um, along Haven in the apartments and single family homes west of Haven. In addition, the Haven City Market promises to have a positive economic impact on the city. The city is excited about this project because of the, the added jobs that will be created um, by this uh, with potential space for 35 businesses in addition to a grocery store that um, that'll add a lot of jobs to the immediate area um, you know, help with the quality of life um, for the residents and, and you know future business owners. Rancho Cucamonga prides itself as being business friendly and the developers of Haven City Market say they've gotten a great deal of help from city staff. The city got heavily involved in terms of helping us with Everything from getting permitting to, you know, helping us with our tenant, our potential tenants that have questions to get their permitting and whatnot to start building out their spaces within the project. So they've been actually a huge help. As for now, most of the changes and upgrades at the site are being made to the inside of the building, with plans being made for a full makeover to the outside as well. The decor is actually what I'm very excited about. It's going to be more of like a vintage industrial feel. So some beautiful brick, nice steel, unique, very unique steel. Um, and that'll be incorporated on the outside as well as throughout the whole um, interior of the building. In addition, there will be a 20,000 square foot outside garden and patio area that will host concerts and entertainment. The idea is to make the Haven City Market more than a place to eat but a destination for fun and hanging out. It's definitely going to be just not an experience of dining, but also, you know, community gathering in terms of a place to go to hang out for a couple of hours and just to enjoy, you know, Haven City Market. It's, it's within itself um, a little mecca for foodies. 
And for foodies and all Rancho Cucamonga residents, it won't be long before you'll be able to experience this unique dining concept. The developers of Haven City Market hope to open in the fall of this year. I'm David Wiley for Healthy RC Living. Construction has kicked off for an amazing soccer facility within Rancho Cucamonga's Epicenter Sports Complex. The City Council recently joined officials from the British-based Goal Soccer Centers to break ground on a nearly 4.2-acre state-of-the-art soccer facility. Uh, and we know that you'll be a great city to work with because we've enjoyed a very strong relationship with you, with you so far. Planned for an area that's been home to full-size soccer fields just south of Quake Stadium, this will be the third goal soccer center here in California and represents a huge investment in Rancho Cucamonga. We're looking forward to creating jobs. We're going to be spending $5 million building this facility. Uh, we want to employ local people. We want to employ local refs, local coaches. Uh, we think it would be a great addition to your city and we're very proud to uh, be here today. The concept behind Goal Soccer Centers is to create smaller artificial turf soccer fields that are perfect for teams of seven or five players or even less rather than the traditional 11. The Rancho Cucamonga Goal Soccer Center will feature 10 short-sighted fields named after iconic soccer stadiums from around the world. In addition, it will have LED lighting, a 4,000 square foot clubhouse, a modern sports lounge featuring a cafe offering beer and wine and a variety of food items. Discussions about bringing a goal soccer center to Rancho actually began several years ago and after many discussions, Goals felt that Rancho Cucamonga was the perfect place for their investment. We selected Rancho Cucamonga to build the facility because of the proximity to the quakes, we heard about you building this sort of sports center, the mecca of sports in Rancho. We wanted to be part of that. Gold Soccer Complex, when complete, is expected to reduce by more than $100,000 the amount of general fund dollars currently used to sustain the Epicenter Sports Complex. In addition, it provided all of our residents the opportunity to have this wonderful facility with 10 short-sighted soccer fields uh, with the uh, synthetic turf, uh, it also allows some of our peewee programs to participate on these fields as opposed to participating in open grass areas. They actually get soccer fields um, with a cafe and a restaurant and um, all the amenities that this uh, facility will provide. Construction on the state-of-the-art facility is expected to take the rest of the year with a grand opening in January of 2018. And needless to say, the facility is expected to be a huge draw. And on busy nights, we'll have three, 400 people playing soccer here, so we're really excited about building the facility. I would be willing to bet that it's going to be approximately uh, 30 to 40,000 more participants for this facility as in comparison to what it was doing at this time last year. It's, it's a big facility. When you see it there, uh, when it's built, it's a pretty impressive facility. And with this new soccer facility and other major improvements being made to the Epicenter Sports Center, Rancho Cucamonga is ready to take on the mantle of being the sports mecca of the Inland Empire. I'm David Wiley for Healthy RC Living. That wraps up our first show of the year on the January episode of Healthy RC Living. If you tuned in late, don't worry. You can catch Healthy RC Living all month long, airing daily three times a day at 8 in the morning, 3 in the afternoon, and 7 in the evening right here on Channel 3, except Wednesdays. Or watch all our episodes online, HealthyRC.com. Don't forget to check out our new blog, HealthyRCLiving.com. I'm your host, Heather Dawson. We'll see you next time.